everything seemed to be on track, with the majority of the 190 ICAO members agreeing a framework that would be introduced in 2020. And then, in mid-October, the EU announced that they were planning to partially reintroduce their tax to cover all third-party airlines flying into their airspace, effective 1 January 2014. There appears to be a silver lining for African travellers, though. So if a country has less than 1% of global av international aviation traffic, it should be exempt from market-based measures. But in the European proposal, it uses a slightly different set of criteria, so it's currently not clear whether airlines from South Africa or Kenya would be exempt, but certainly many airlines from other African countries may be exempt. The confusion surrounding the EU's latest announcement will be clarified in the coming weeks. The airline industry, in the meantime, has been working on reducing their carbon emissions by looking at alternative energy sources. We signed an MOU with South African Airways. Why? Because South Africa does have good stewardship of its forests, both here and in Mozambique. There is a lot of woody mass that can be used to develop new biofuels. We have the technology, we have had commercial airplanes and military airplanes like the F-A-18 already operating with the biofuels. Another airline manufacturer has been working with South African Airways to streamline the approach and departure paths into and out of airports. Work that we did on um, navigation procedures in South Africa is really a template. It was, if you like, a pilot project and we're looking to be able to roll that out at other airports, not just here in the region but around the world. Um, and with the advent of new navigation technologies that we can put into the aircraft, this now becomes possible. The national aviation industry is responsible for 2% of the world's global man-made CO2 emissions, or 690 million tons of carbon per annum. And the airlines are currently paying around $7 billion annually in emissions-related charges. In a fast-growing industry like ours, where we're planning on growth of 4 to 5 percent in our traffic, we can't allow our emissions to continue to grow at that level. And that's why the industry's put a very comprehensive plan together. While executives at IATA were a little surprised by the EU Commission's announcement, it still has to be voted on. IATA are hoping that its members will stay the course, though, and work towards a global market-based measure. What remains to be seen is whether the third parties that fly over the EU will actually pay those fines. I'm Angelo Coppola for CCTV in Somerset West in the Western Cape.